In this video, we learn how to calculate the Fourier transform of the discrete time unit step function, which I've drawn here. The step function is zero for negative times, and then it, it takes on the value of plus one for all of the positive integers. Uh, this is considered to be a power signal. It has infinite energy. And um, so rather than just plugging into the discrete time Fourier transform formula, we're going to have to use some tricks or do something else to figure out how to um, find a formula for the transform. To help us along the way, I have drawn another function that we're going to focus on first, uh, calling it the sequence v. And um, it takes on uh, the value 1 at time 0 and all positive times, just like the unit step. But at t negative times, it takes on the value negative 1. The important feature of this function that we're going to use is that uh, if you compute this first difference between the function and a shifted version of the function delayed by one sample, then uh, you get two times the Kronecker delta function. And um, I'm not going to dwell on uh, proving this right now, but I think if you work with this sequence, you can see that um, if you delay by a sample you, and subtract, you'll get two Kronecker deltas um, piling up here at time zero, and you'll get uh, cancellation at all the other times. So the way that we're going to go about, um, we're going to first calculate the Fourier transform of this V sequence by taking the Fourier transform of both sides of this relation. Now, on the right-hand side, the Fourier transform of a Kronecker delta is just 1. So on the right-hand side, in the transform domain, we have 2. And then over here on the left-hand side, the Fourier transform of Vn is just V. And the Fourier transform of a time-delayed version uh, is just V of f times e to the minus j2 pi f times 1, which is the delay. We can figure out the Fourier transform of V by solving this equation for V of f, and that gives us this expression here. Now let's move back over to the other side and work on the unit step function. The relation between u and v is shown here mathematically, but I think it's pretty easy to see from the picture that if we take the v function and shift it up by 1, all of the negative time samples will be 0, and all of the positive time samples will be 2. So that's represented here on the inside of these parentheses. So if we divide by 2, we'll get the step function back with 0 for negative times and 1 for positive times. Well, we can do the same thing now that we did before. We can take the Fourier transform of both sides of this expression, and using um, a transform that we proved previously, which is that the transform of a constant of, of 1 is equal to an infinite train of delta functions, uh, we, we get this expression here. So the transform of the unit step is u of f, the transform of 1 half of v is 1 half v of f, and then the transform of 1 half is 1 half times a train of delta functions. And then the last step is simply to substitute the expression for the v for your transform from the other side, and this gives us the full transform of the unit step function. So for your homework assignment, please work through all of these steps, draw pictures, explain and justify each of the steps, and uh, turn that in for the homework problem on proving the Fourier transform of the unit step function.